Hello YouTube, it's Doss Gregor, and welcome to another exciting episode from L L L F S. I thought I was an L F S. Wait a minute here. Who switched my L F S with Gen 2? I think I'm in Gen 2. Let's see. Yep, look at that. OS Gen 2. I'm running a Gen 2 kernel. Only been up for five hours, but I've got 701 packages already installed. Wow. But I'm still on the Core i5, and I'm only using 314 megs. That is sweet. That's right, folks. Now, I did not give up on LFS. <laughs> but if some of you remember last week's episode of I Blewed It Up, I Blew It Up. <laughs> but I fixed it. It's all better. The whole point of what I was trying to do last weekend was to set aside a bit of space for a guest OS on my LFS laptop. And a lot of people have asked me to refresh my Gen 2 install videos, which I know they're getting old, but honestly, not much has really changed. There's a few things that have changed, but not much. And it's very difficult to document installing Gen 2 on real hardware because you can only get so far and then you have to reboot into the system. And once you've rebooted into the system, unless you have an external camera focused just right on the system, you're not going to really get much out of that experience. So... I have not done that for a while. Even, I think, in my install Gen 2 videos from a couple years ago, those were all in VirtualBox. But what I thought I might do is, first off, I wanted to refresh myself. It's been a while since I've installed Gen 2, don't you know? Yeah, you know, my, my laptop that is my main laptop over here is an HP Envy, you forget, blah, 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 it's 17 inch. It's about four and a half years old, and I've had Gen 2 on it since I got it back in whoever knows how long ago that was. <laughs> I believe I purchased that either in Christmas of 2012 or Christmas of 2013. I believe it was 13. So we're getting real close to five years on that. And it's been a good system, and like I said, Gen 2's been on there since the very beginning. So it's not something that I install on a regular basis. And so I wanted to refresh myself of how to install it so I didn't make myself look too much the fool going through the handbook and looking like I'm fumbling over myself. And honestly, things went very well. I will say, just like LFS, if you can read documentation and follow the instructions, it just installs. There's really nothing that jumped out at me or made me think, ooh, I've got to research this better. Probably the scariest thing is your kernel, and even that's not that bad. I mean, honestly, if you just emerged the kernel, went into it, and didn't even do a make menu config, but just did the make, make modules, install, make install, etc., etc., and set up your grub, it should function. Now, there will be specific items and hardware issues that probably don't work out of the box, and you'll have to go back in and fiddle with those to make sure that they're right. Uh, one of the things that I had trouble with, for instance, in this particular build of Gen 2 was my wireless driver. You know, my old theory of doing hardware in Gen 2 was that if the hardware was built into the system, one ought to go ahead and build it into the kernel. If it's something that you can hot plug, unplug, replug, etc., such as SD cards, USB sticks, um, USB headsets, uh, joysticks, etc., those are things that can be removed easily and, and replugged, etc., into that. Oh, etc., etc., etc. I'm saying etc. way too much. <laughs> But I always figured that if it's something like that, one should always install into the kernel as a module. But lately, that has changed. My sound card, I have found that it doesn't work correctly in a lot of instances if I build it into the kernel. 
and in this time my wireless was not working it would fail unable to find firmware which I thought was kind of strange because I swear I've always built my wireless card into the kernel before and never had issues and this time I ended up to get the wireless card to function properly I ended up having to uh, set it as a module instead so what I am finding is while it's good to get rid of all of that hardware that your system doesn't have lately it's been better to install the hardware as a module instead of building it into the kernel well, personally I'd rather have it built in the kernel because it's not like I'm gonna grab my wireless card and pull it out of there yes it is a little PCI card that's inside the laptop that if I took it apart I could pull it out and put a new one in but it's not going to happen and it's not going to be a real quick you know, on the fly type thing so there are a few items like that that were a little bit difficult for me uh, I think the only other thing is I did use grub from my LFS to set up the boot for it I did not install grub in Gen 2 and therefore I had to set the new root inside of the uh, grub config and outside of doing that getting my wireless working everything else just worked flawlessly just by following the instructions within the handbook and so I really don't think it's as scary as people think it really is like I said, if you can read the manual and follow instructions, really, it should just work. And believe me, after being on LFS for the last month and knowing the kind of pain one must go through, installing each package, each dependency, finding if they aren't in the LFS handbook or BLFS handbook, you know, finding those packages, finding those extra dependencies, and making them work within that distribution gen 2 is easy it is cake compared to that let me do this if gen 2 is to lfs as ubuntu is to gen 2 very simple lfs was so tedious not something though that you would keep anybody from being able to install if they just followed the handbook Gen 2 the same way. If you just follow the handbook, there really isn't that much that can go wrong with it. But then again, that's why I do recommend using VirtualBox or now Quemu. You know, I was really impressed with Quemu on LFS. You know, install it in a virtual machine first just to try it out. That way, if anything goes wrong, you can always use a snapshot of it and go back to that snapshot or you start all over again and you haven't done anything that can mess up your real hardware. But as I've said when doing distribution reviews, the experience you get inside a virtual machine is never the same experience that you will have putting something on real hardware. When you put something on bare bones, on real hardware, things may act completely differently than the way they acted inside of a virtual machine. And I'll be honest, I think there was only one distribution when I was doing those distribution reviews that actually blew up my system because the partitions that I specified to install into certain things were not the partitions that it used when it actually did its install and so it messed up some stuff and that made me quite upset with that and I won't go too much into it because honestly I have slept a lot since then and I have forgotten a lot of things <laughs> that's why I wanted to install Gen 2 in this extra partition before I go recording it and making a bumbling fool of myself if I do some stumbling along the way so hopefully within the next week or so, I will blow this away and we will start over and I will record installing Gen 2. Of course, once again, once we get to that point where, hey, everything's installed, everything's configured, now i got to boot into it, we're kind of at, at an impasse of, I can't record that. So we'll see how it goes and then we'll move on from there. And then after that, maybe we'll look at BSD and a few other distributions and see how that goes. But right now, 
I'm still really enjoying LFS. It's just there's not too much content for me to keep talking about because honestly, right now it's running, it's running, it's running solid, and I really don't have too many things going wrong with it, and no hiccups other than user error trying to screw around with partitions. Yeah, I learned don't mess with parted. It's best if you're going to mess with partitions of any sort, do yourself a favor. Make yourself a USB boot disk with Gparted and then boot into that and then mess with your partitions that way. You don't want to be messing with partitions when you're inside of a working OS because there are a few things that can go wrong. And if you have a bald moment, yes, folks, the bald moment, <laughs> yeah, then, then, oh dear. Oh dear, looked like my screensaver was starting to go on there. I guess that's been 10 minutes then since I stopped touching the screen. Oh my. Anyway, yeah, if you have a bald moment, like I said, of like myself, and do something screwy with it, then you could end up doing some pretty bad damage to everything else. So if it's morning, evening, noon, or night, whatever you're having, I hope you enjoy it. Thanks for watching. Yes, this is Gen 2. Yes, I'm still in LFS, and maybe in the next week or so, we'll look at installing Gen 2 again, and I'll refresh some of those videos. And maybe I might have to start taking another look at a lot of the Gen 2 ways and methods that I have in the past discussed and talked about. If, there's, if there are any specific topics about Gen 2 that you would like me to create a video about and discuss, please let me know because sometimes I don't know what you guys out there are looking for. And like Dirt might say here or there, um, if you're still watching this, yeah, then yeah. So if you're still watching this, <laughs> if there are specific topics you would like me to discuss, I'm not the end all know all to Gen 2, but it is my passion. I very much enjoy it, have used it for so many years. And if I can help you out there, I would love to do so. So, bye guys.